All these stories you hear of desperate Ukrainian or Russian women throwing themselves at foreigners don't apply until you get to the late 20s and early 30s. But by then, she's past her prime. Yet. Greetings from Odessa Mama on this spectacular Indian summer's sunset evening here by the port of Odessa. It's been fantastic weather and today's Vodka Vodka as we our client is about a book that came out almost 10 years ago. I'm actually shooting this video in September 2021. Not sure when we'll get to publish it on the channel but 20. 22 is the 10th anniversary of a book that is, I guess, infamous about dating in Ukraine. It was published in 2012 by Rush V, a very controversial figure on the internet. So in today's podcast, I'm just going to go into a little bit about Rush V because I actually met him in person. Very few people know that. I've uh, never talked about that, I think, on the channel before. And what the book was about, what has changed maybe in Ukraine since then and whether well I wasn't going to tell you what I think of the book <laughs> in short in very brief and then whether you should go and read it in 2022 or maybe 2021 at the end of 2021 whether it's still relevant if you are planning to come to Ukraine and you're interested in dating Ukrainian women now a little bit of background about Rouge V super controversial uh, he's been known as a sex tourist a pickup artist a men's rights activist, a controversial political figure, but basically, in short, in brief, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly when he started traveling and writing his series of books, but he was, I guess, an early blogger and then vlogger here on YouTube. And he traveled around um, a lot of different parts of the world, especially in Europe, and he wrote books about his sexual adventures I guess he's experienced dating the local women in all these countries and he published a series of I guess guides for uh, men who wanted to come from primarily to the West to that particular country whether it was going to be a good idea for them in terms of uh, meeting local women and having success in sleeping with them so the, the series of books that he produced used the title bang X country so it was called bang Ukraine and he had other countries which he funnily put his do not bang X country or whatever right so that was the series of books he was uh, at the time quite controversial he was accused of being a misogynist of being a sex tourist and uh, later on then he changed tack and became a political figure when he went back to the US he was born in the US in Washington DC I believe and then afterwards later he went 180 and became a born-again Christian and completely rejected his former work, including this book, Buying Ukraine is Against Fornication, Sex Outside of Marriage and all this. So nowadays he doesn't talk about it. He's completely rejected his uh, previous work, but the book, I am still <coughs> asked about the book and a forum that he ran for like-minded guys who were traveling in different countries and trying to sleep with women. And when I asked on other uh, live streams whether I'm on another youtubers channel or even on my own I did one to celebrate the hundredth uh, episode of Vodka Vodka as I was even asked about it as well so today's video I'm just going to briefly outline it as I said so that is who Rush V is and really was I guess when he was writing these books and uh, I've actually met him and I met him in this city Odessa and it's quite a funny story because I wasn't familiar with his work that much when I, when, when I met him. I had actually been introduced to it. I had watched a video on YouTube that came up where he was on Ukrainian television. He was basically taken apart. Um, some one guy, girl in the, in the kind of a studio audience, uh, she said that he was stalking her. He accused her of him of stalking her in Kharkiv. Also another girl said that in the uh, photos they use in the book that she's in it and she never gave her permission to be in the books anyways he had all this controversy and it was actually on his channel I thought wow that's chutzpah that he would put such a, a, a TV interview that didn't paint him in a particularly good light on his own channel uh, I guess all publicity is good publicity was his philosophy so I had been introduced to him kind of randomly and a girl I knew here in Odessa who actually uh, knew quite well uh, she Kathy is her name um, 
I think I sent it to her or someone told me that she had actually met Rush here when he came to Odessa. And this is relevant for the book because he talks about being in Kharkiv and in Odessa in this book, Buying Ukraine. And she had actually met him. So I wrote her and said, hey, what's the story? You met this guy, uh, Rush. She said, yeah, he was actually quite nice in person, but his book is terrible, blah, blah. I was like, okay. Whatever. And I kind of forgot about it. And then I came to Odessa, maybe it was a month or two later, it was the beginning of summer, and I wrote to Katya, hey, let's uh, meet up. And she was at this beach bar. Uh, it's actually Truman by the beach here. So I went down there. I walk in, I look around to see Katya. Where is she? And I spot this guy standing beside a pillar in the center of the bar. And I went, no way, it's Rouge. <laughs> he was standing there. So Katya came over. Um, I said, is that Rouge? And she's like, oh my God, what is he doing in Odessa? I said, this is too weird a coincidence. We've already you know, written a couple of messages about this book he wrote and about you meeting him. I'm going to go over and I'm going to invite him <laughs> over for a drink with us. This is just a, such a strange uh, coincidence. Went over, invited over. He remembered they'd met two years uh, previously at some event and we chatted and he was actually quite affable, I would say. Um, yeah, I would say that he was quite amiable, quite uh, pleasant actually to talk to in person, which is a bit different to maybe his online persona at the time, which was a little bit more caustic. And uh, we actually met up for a coffee and had a chat about different things. He was uh, giving me tips about how to be a writer and to publish stuff, self-publish, uh, which was quite uh, nice of him because really he didn't know me from Adam. And uh, yeah, so that's actually how I met him. So that's a bit of a disclaimer at the beginning before I review uh, this book and you know, advise where you should read or not. I've actually met the guy in person. Now, uh, I did notice a few things, and these are also pertinent to how I evaluate the book when I met him. Uh, he didn't seem very calibrated. Uh, we're at a beach club. He wore dark clothing. It was quite long, and uh, maybe he had that as a strategy. Um, but in the book, as I referred to, he talks about how little success he had with women in Ukraine. So I actually could see a lot of things that just didn't make sense to me from a guy who was promoting himself as kind of a pickup artist or whatnot uh, at the time. Um, and he was quite, mm, I would say, uh, needy uh, to have success in Odessa. It's also relevant to what he wrote in the book, I realized uh, later. And at the end, he concluded it was better to go to Poland for him personally. So now, just before I get into the meat of the book, uh, let me address the claim that he was a sex tourist. Now, I had a good few conversations with him over coffee and also that evening I met him twice and he never indicated that he paid women for sex, which is actually the definition of a sex tourist by the United Nations. It's commercial sex it has to be a payment uh, in, in quid pro quo for the sex. I never saw him as a sex tourist. And that is a box. Uh, if you watch my many of my other videos, I refer to you need to get out of the sex tourist box when you come here to Odessa because a lot of girls just assume that because there are a lot of sex tourists here. He never struck me as that. Uh, he described himself as a love tourist and um, I guess that might be a little bit uh, disingenuous to call himself a love tourist since he was trying to get uh, his body count as to say to sleep with as many women as possible it seemed on his trips uh, maybe not love but definitely as some sort of seduction love tourist but a sex tourist uh, paying you know prostitutes that is not my impression so I think that's a little bit um, of a, definitely a false accusation that was leveled at the time now Personally, I would see him more as a pickup artist. That was something I guess was more popular back in those days. Now there's still guys who promote day game and whatnot, and that was a lot of what he was doing. I think he was a pioneer in the sense that he wrote a lot about his experiences. Uh, and actually a lot of people who came after him, especially Eastern Europe, uh, they probably read the book and then built on it and were able to make with YouTube, of course, we're able to communicate, not just me, but other, uh, I guess, guys who advise you about lifestyle here in Eastern Europe and dating being part of that, a large part of why guys want to come here. Uh, definitely, it contributed to developing that genre. Now, let's get into the meat of the book first before I tell you what I personally think of it. So I'm gonna read you just a few uh, quick quotes from the book. I won't go in massive detail about the book. If you're really interested, obviously, you can go and read the whole thing. Just some briefly, uh, start with the positives. I think he did get a few things right about coming here to Ukraine. And some of the things that he did get right are about like poor service in general. Don't think that's changed a huge amount. That you get interrogated by local girls here definitely still happens a lot. bit like being in a KGB 
uh, interrogation room. A lot of these dates with Ukrainian girls as a foreigner for sure. I think especially at that time because it was less common that foreign guys actually came here uh, and especially spent a lot of time in Ukraine. Like remote work wasn't as big a thing in 2012 as it is in 2021, 2022. He also complains about the lack of English. Uh, definitely at the time that was a massive issue. And I don't think it's, I think obviously the level of English has improved a bit, but it's still on the lower end here in Europe in terms of the English language skills. Now, let me read out some of the quotes from the book. All these stories you hear of desperate Ukrainian or Russian women throwing themselves at foreigners don't apply until you get to the late 20s and early 30s. But by then, she's past her prime. Even more so today, and that was, that was true also at the time. Um, yeah, so I agree with him about that. Um, it will be no surprise that I recommend you study Russian for a few months before visiting Ukraine. One hour a day of study will help with navigation and also take you out of the sex tourist category with women. It won't be easy as Russian is one of the hardest languages in the world to learn, but it will be worth it. 100% agree. Get yourself out of that sex tourist box. So. Anyways, I've forgotten that was one of the quotes out of the, out of the book, but definitely that was very good. Um, pound for pound, inch by inch, you won't find women who look more like women anywhere else in the world. It also doesn't hurt that they are thin. The only land whales you'll see in Ukraine are American Peace Corps volunteers. Now, I think that was definitely true back in 2012 when he wrote the book. I think today, and I refer to that in some of my other videos, is starting to take a turn towards uh, bigger ladies here in Ukraine. It's still, obesity is not a big issue at all, especially if you go to Western Europe or North America, but it is not as skinny as it was back in 2012. And as you will see, if you come to Odessa and go on Derabasuska uh, Street, Derabasuska Street, uh, the, the central pedestrian street, uh, in one part of there are lots of new fast food joints like KFC and McDonald's, always full of young Ukrainians. So it doesn't look good uh, for the future on the, uh, the weight size, but that was the case back in 2012. So some impressions that I take issue with, or I would disagree with her. Want to debate with Rusha Verdamin again. Uh, Odessa is the hot spot during the summer, but it's not an easy, to pick, uh, easy place to pick up since most girls go with their family or boyfriends. Many guys have used the word torture when describing it because of the beautiful girls that they couldn't get. Now, you won't be surprised I'm gonna disagree with this a little bit. Um, because it is not an easy place to pick up girls. I actually like to joke, it's the hardest place in this former Soviet Union, almost. I know Chechen is probably harder, but that aside, uh, don't, I advise this to my clients, whether it's con on my consulting calls or they're on, say, they're an in-person client or they're one of my programs for, say, moving to Ukraine for three to 12 months a year. All of those links, as usual, are down below in the description. If you're considering any of those, um, I always advise if you're primarily interested in dating women <clears throat> in the former Soviet Union, then don't come to Odessa. There are lots of other reasons to come to Odessa, but the local ladies and hooking up and stuff, it's very hard here. But I disagree about it. It's a place where women come with their uh, boyfriends and family. No, single girls also come here. I was here with a Dutch friend uh, who's actually born here, and he did that. He picked up <laughs> We're out, it was from Zaporozhye. Um, so there are plenty of girls like that actually come to Odessa. The real issues with the local girls of Odessa is extremely hard if you just fly in here for the weekend and stuff. Uh, but um, no, girls don't come here just with their family and their boyfriends. I was really surprised. I actually asked him uh, at the time why he'd written that in the book and he uh, indicated it was because he uh, didn't really have any stories about Odessa because he struck out when he was here. And um, yeah, he kind of, I guess, I was happy he made that up at the time. In the end, it's impossible for me to say that Ukrainian girls are hotter than Polish girls. But I will say that for the average guy, a typical Ukrainian girl in a club will appear to be both hotter and more feminine. They just may not actually be hotter if you bust out a magnifying glass. Definitely not. I've been a lot in Poland. I get often asked about why I don't make videos about Polish girls. Probably you're already can sense where this is going it's because it's not as interesting as talking about the beauty of Ukrainian women or Russian women or Moldovan women or Belarusian women or even women from the Baltics I just don't think there is as many beautiful women on average in general in Poland as there is here um, yeah I think it was probably a lot easier for him in Poland that's why he decided to go back there afterwards um, but yeah 
no I didn't that. and he has a lot in it that you create in the book that Ukrainians are just like they patch everything up with makeup and they're not actually that good looking on with bad skin I think that was actually a lot truer 10 years ago in, the, in his defense when he wrote that I don't really think that's the case today um, I think there's just a lot more natural beauty here in Ukraine and even if they have been a little bit heavier on the scales than they were uh, in 2012 still most women are extremely thin here so that obviously makes a big difference um, last quote as long as the girl is generous pleasant and happy I don't need her to entertain me or stimulate my brain if you're the kind of guy that gets a boner when an American girl uh, gives you a witty comeback then Ukrainian women are not for you you'll find them to be simple-minded and boring Ukraine is not a place where personality is valued uh, I don't really agree with that I think you might be able to say that a little bit about Belarusians and maybe Belarus Belarusians can be a bit boring I've said that before uh, but um, girls from Odessa are boring there are a lot of things this is scam central <laughs> so there are a lot of negative things that I could talk about but boring is not one that really pops into my mind I think a lot of it was to do with the fact that he didn't speak Russian or Ukrainian and he was relying on girls who could speak English or spoke very little English and they didn't really have the ability to really communicate or make jokes and it's pretty hard to make a witty joke in a foreign language unless you've got a pretty good level so I think it was been a bit unfair there um, in terms of yeah that they're simple-minded and boring I think it's also a little bit about who we attract I um, mean you can attract simple-minded and boring girls also in America uh, if that's you know the type of girl you're inviting out um, yeah so I don't really think that's a fair fair uh, critique of a Ukrainian women I think if anything they're anything but boring <laughs> there are a lot of other things you could have talked about that were uh, uh, maybe a negative point but boring is not one of them so uh, but he did recognize that you need to learn Russian. This is actually one of the reasons as well, because you will be able to understand the humor and whatnot. So um, let me just critique. I mean, I've given you a few uh, quotes from it. Uh, in general, I thought the book was good if you had never been to Ukraine before, because he has actually been here and he's from his experience. But overall, I um, found it not super useful for any other type of guy at the time and an indication is that the fact that he had so little success with women he didn't really get Ukraine maybe he got Poland a lot better that's why he wanted to go back there but uh, he didn't really get Ukraine and he was in Kharkiv Kharkiv was like for a guy who describes who's described or which would be self-described at the time as a pickup artist then that should have been like paradise for him because that was the best city to go uh, for women uh, to meet beautiful girls easily in Ukraine at the time and my experience and he had so little success and I'll run into now just a few of the things um, that I felt that he was describing the book that were big uh, you know reasons why he was unsuccessful relatively because he said he had I think two um, yeah he had two kind of successes in Kharkiv in four months that's like that's such a low batting average and uh, in Desi, he completely struck out. I don't think he really wanted to talk about that in the book. So if you take it, you know, his experience of being here for... Uh, there's some nice opera music going on in the background. So if you take that his success, or that his time here was over six months, two uh, successes for a guy who's spending every waking minute, apparently, uh, if he's not writing about his, his experiences, actually pursuing women. It's extremely low. Uh, performance rate or batting average so he describes in the book a lot about his approaches and whatnot and he, you know he cr criticized the Ukrainian girls for him boring he's boring as fuck <laughs> when he's when he's doing them he asks all these lame bloody questions all the time no creativity um, yeah I mean I guess that's why he was attracting boring girls and that's why he, he ended up in the experience the ones that you'd even get out on a date because um, there was just like no there's so little spark in anything he said like I like to talk about the killer combo where you can combine being assertive like the real Russian or Ukrainian man and a playfulness that I think Westerners have that Russian and Ukrainian guys actually lack a lot of the time a little bit less in Odessa they have a bit more of a spark to them but that's the killer combo uh, Rouge in the book didn't really display it any of that whatsoever and he comes across as very needy a lot of the time he had all these milestones about going for a kiss and all this structure it didn't make any sense in the local culture in my experience there's a, a situation in the book where he he says that he went to a cafe that he'd been to before the girls and the waiter sold him out the commas by uh, saying oh you're back again uh, 
Mr. Roosh. Uh, I'm not sure if he used his real name when he was there, but anyways. Uh, and he got really uptight and said, oh, the guy was trying to <coughs> screw me over. I don't see, I, that would be actually a huge cool thing to happen if the waiter said, hey, Roosh, you're back here. It shows that you actually have some connections in uh, Kharkiv and he didn't seem to have any local friends whatsoever. Either guys or girls are actually just friends. So no social network, uh, no one to follow him in terms of status. And uh, he didn't even hang around with a foreigner who had actually spent a lot of time in Ukraine or in Kharkiv or in Odessa. So uh, yeah, huge, huge errors to make. And again, getting super uptight, kind of trying to find uh, problems in something that you could obviously turn into a plus and be like, oh yeah, high five and back again. Instead of being, hey, why are you saying I'm back again? You're trying to let the girl go. I was on other dates in this cafe. And it just seemed like, um, yeah, he didn't particularly have an astute, astute strategy. I think that applies outside of Ukraine. And he basically gave up on clubbing. And clubbing in Kharkiv, especially, was it was phenomenal. No. It was crazy when he used to go there with my friends uh, back in the day or I'd go on solo missions. That was the best thing. I actually remember I asked him about, hey, but didn't you go to this club or this club? And he had no idea what they were. He said, yeah, I think I heard of that place. I mean, this should be one of the first things to check out, especially back in those days in Kharkiv. So basically in the book, he did have some sort of relationship with a girl who was, uh, he was working as an English teacher. Um, and uh, that was another thing he said that, you know, uh, they didn't give him any sort of value uh, he didn't get much perceived value from the foreigner as much as hope and on top of it he was saying he was a writer in some or, or I think and he wasn't given much value for that because he didn't have particularly social status here uh, to say that uh, either of those things in particular a little bit better back in 2012 than it is now uh, definitely not today uh, so in general he just didn't get um, Ukraine or have a good strategy for what he's doing uh, so that's kind of overall what I felt about the book in terms of it being valuable. It is interesting to see his perspective because he did go there in 2012 and to think about how things were back in the day. Uh, but I can see why he really struggled in Ukraine and he had, as I said, you know, just uh, in one relationship, maybe one other hookup uh, while he was in Kharkov. And that was when he was working as an English teacher and she was working at the same place. So, and he was a higher status because he was the native speaker. So that's a very easy, uh, like, when we talk about hypergamy, hypergamous um, situation um, to actually be in a relationship with a girl once you clearly have that higher status within the tribe, which was kind of, I guess, the English school at the time. And English groupie, obviously, on top of that, could speak English, obviously. So really, he struck out terribly uh, when he was here. I guess, well, if I had the experience I have now, maybe I could have he could have taken me on as a coach at the time but anyways that's my feeling having gone to the book in brief and even if I don't agree with a lot of things that he says in the book it is still interesting to assess it and you know critique it because it's not like everything he said is incorrect in the book in my opinion so what has changed since 2012 well social media has come this was pre Instagram days when he was here um, also uh, obviously, Ukrainians can travel a lot more. They have visa free to Schengen. There are a lot more foreign tourists coming here than there were back in the days. He's a little, he would have, you know, a lot more competitive situation for being a foreigner here in Odessa or Kiev or in Kharkiv. Not really the undiscovered spot that it was at the time. The level of English has probably increased a good bit since then. And, you know, there are cheap flights also for Ukrainians to travel in and out. Uh, as I said, also for the foreigners to come here. So I actually think a guy like Rouge today would do worse even worse than he did uh, at the time so i think a guy like Rouge would actually do a little bit worse than today with all those extra factors with the instagram and uh, even though english is a little bit more spoken in ukraine that would be one maybe a little bit make it a little bit easier but all the other things make it a lot harder like he still has low socioeconomic status probably gonna hurt him even more today uh, he doesn't have a social circle gonna hurt him more today i get zero close to zero uh, perceived extra value from in a foreigner um, because they have Instagram they travel around there are a lot more foreigners and um, yeah he didn't have the killer combo um, to really be successful with the ladies here he went to Poland seems like he had a good time there before he decided to change his lifestyle and <coughs> reject relations with women whatsoever romantic relationships with women um, sexual ones for sure so in conclusion should you read Bang Ukraine by Rush V in 2022. I think you should only read it if you are really interested in the history of pickup artists or really interested in seeing 
what it was like in 2012 and getting a perspective on that from a guy who came here and lived here. And um, yeah, that's about it. I think if you actually want to come to Ukraine and be successful, I think the book was better than nothing in 2012, but not fantastic. And a lot of things have changed. So I think it's outdated today. So that is my brief overview of Bang Ukraine by Rush V. And another thing I'm asked about is, of course, whether he had the forum, whether I was a part of that, whatever wrote on it. I, in fact, don't even think I ever read anything on it. Uh, at the time, I was not interested in his forum. I was not writing on it. So let me kill that, um, maybe it's not a rumor, but, but that, uh, that possibility in your mind. No, I was not on his forum. So uh, what can I say? The sun is about to set over there, over over here, over the port of Odessa. Just got this last little bit of light, ray of light before we go into nighttime. And you, if you want to go forward and actually make progress when you're here in Ukraine, you need to be on my free mailing list. Down below, I have a checklist, which are the five biggest mistakes made by Western men when they come to date the beautiful women of Eastern Europe. So definitely worth checking out. It's completely free. You also then uh, get on my free mailing list and you will be on that mail list where I open all my new programs to my most loyal fans. Um, I mentioned a few of those programs in today's vodcast. Obviously, Slavic Utopia Secrets Ukraine. I also had a vodcast just there uh, recently where I talked about why if you want to be successful in dating, don't mind anything else, but dating, then you need to spend more time here. And actually, the guys who do the best, the guys who spend a lot of time, who don't actually just come in for two weeks, but come in for three months, six months, a uh, year. And also, if you are planning to come here and are not sure about how to you know, go about things, I have started a new coaching program called Consigliere Connor. I'll be your consigliere. One of my clients gave me that name. He felt I was his consigliere, his advisor. Comes from Italian consigliere. Actually, the mob uses it quite a lot. And <laughs> so on that program, I will revamp your Instagram and Tinder accounts to make them a lot more attractive to the local ladies here in Eastern Europe and generate a lot more leads and provide value for you. We'll also jump on calls one-to-one -one scheduled every week, every two weeks, where we will work on your real man mindset, which is one of the keys to success here in Eastern Europe with the beautiful women. Also, we will work on your Slavic mentality intelligence so that you understand the dating culture and the differences with the West in particular. And we will talk to each other on WhatsApp. You'll actually have me there with you virtually in the field when you come here to Eastern Europe. We have a um, yeah, package where you also get access to me. So imagine having me virtually with you. On the in-person our experience, of course, you have me actually there with you. But on the Consigliere Connor package, I am there virtually with you. So all guaranteed to generate great quality leads for you. It's all down below in the description. Sun has set, I'm gonna take it get out of here, out of the port, and enjoy a fantastic evening on this Indian summer in Odessa, Mama. Dopobachna, disvedanya. See you in the next video. Sar Experience.